In this week's video, I want to share some composition mistakes that you want to avoid. And I'm doing so from the last of the very tall and big lighthouses on the Danish west coast that I have yet to visit. And it's called Blovens Hook Lighthouse. Now, hopefully some of these composition mistakes are some you may not have heard before, else it's a really good reminder for those of you who have. And I've come down here to the beach, and this is actually the westernmost point of Denmark. But as you can see here, the beach today, it, it's really not very inspiring. And the first composition mistake is simply just to include all this clutter in your scene. So it's very easy to just grab your camera and try to find some kind of foreground or maybe not even think about the foreground and then just include it all and take the picture. But in all honesty, it just becomes a little bit nah. The easiest way to get around not including clutter in your foreground is actually just to zoom in. So I have my 28 to 200 millimeter Tamron on right here and I'm zooming straight in to the lighthouse. So you can see it's quite small here in the screen, but if I zoom in to something like this here, you can see I include, I fill up the frame with the lighthouse like this. So the next thing you of course can do to avoid too much clutter in the foreground is simply just to move your feet and find another foreground. Uh, so I come up into the dunes where I'm using some of all this grass right here in the foreground. It is April, so it has not started. Well, you can see it's a little bit green down here, but it is mainly still yellow and it gives a beautiful color contrast with the yellow grass here in front to the blue sky. I can also imagine that these particular photos that I'm shooting new, which is more or less right in the middle of the day, will also look absolutely stunning in black and white, simply just because I'm shooting this very high contrast scene where the white lighthouse is lit by the more or less midday sun. And then I have like the golden grass here in front, which ought to also be relatively bright. And then the dark, dark, blue background that I will turn mainly black in post-processing. I think they will look look great in both colors and black and white. So you, you can see here there's uh, different versions of color photos and black and white photos that I've caught so far. So the main thing you want to avoid is to have those high contrast foregrounds that drag a lot of attention away from your main subject. In this case, the lighthouse. Even though the grass here is of course full of details, it is quite monotone. It has the same texture. So that is why it doesn't take up as much attention as the beach would have done uh, down there below because it has all sorts of different patterns and textures in a high contrast environment that would just drag so much attention. And it's the exact same philosophy when it comes to footprints because footprints are also high contrast. And in all honesty, as you can see here, they really don't look very interesting. So for the most part, unless the footprints create like a leading line in themselves through a dune or something like that, then I would try my very best not to include footprints in my photos. Another thing I often see is how the rule of thirds is set to make a scene more interesting. And by applying the rule of thirds, you're basically home free with an interesting composition. I wish it was that simple. 
The rule of thirds can work as a compositional tool, but I find it to be utterly important not to compromise on the balance of the photo. If you place an element like the lighthouse to the left of the middle, you need something else to counterbalance that element on the right side of the middle. It doesn't have to be something important to the story of the photo, although that is usually beneficial. It's simply a question about aesthetics and making sure the photo doesn't feel left or right heavy. In case you do not balance out the photo, it can create unease, which can be beneficial to certain stories, but from a purely aesthetic point of view, in most circumstances, you want a photo that is in balance. Also let me know in the comments which edit you like the best of these photos. The colored bright one, the darker colored one, or the high contrast black and white. I personally like them all, they have their strengths and weaknesses, but I am curious to hear your perspective. So another mistake I see quite a lot is that people are not entirely aware of the perceived direction of like a tree or a mountain or in this case the lighthouse because do, if we look at the lighthouse from this angle here it kind of feels as if the front of the lighthouse is where the windows are and the back side or the side is where the shadow is and as you can see, when I frame my photo like this, it kind of looks a little bit as if the lighthouse is looking out the frame. So optimally, in this case here, I would want to just loosen my camera and then just compose it like this, whoops, so that it looks as if the lighthouse is looking into the frame. However, this creates some other problems for us, and that is, in this case here, due to the houses being all the way over here, it feels a little bit as if the scene is super heavy on the right side. So in this case here, there's two mistakes that you can do. One is to not be aware of the lighthouse's angle, and you want the front, for the most part, of a building to look into the frame, so you need to have it be on the other side of the middle and then look into the frame and you of course want to make sure that your photo is in balance. So if I have those two premises for my photo this angle just doesn't work. I need to find another angle where this photo can work with these two premises. So I moved a little bit up the hill and from this angle here I am cutting off the lower part of the lighthouse but I'm also cutting off the houses and in this way I can just use the foreground dune or grass to create yet another super minimalist photo. In this particular case right now <laughs> there's actually a big cloud that has moved in and is behind the lighthouse so it's not a particularly interesting photo. I'm just going to get it anyway but I did get a version just before with the blue background so in that way this is another high contrast photo of the lighthouse and the foreground dune and it looks much more interesting than just having the lighthouse on a, on a white background. So I've come back down to the beach because <laughs> I've seen this person who have been walking around out here, there. And the person is probably looking for, for amber, is my estimated guess. But I'm using that person <laughs> in my, yeah, as my focal point because I can get 
really close to the water and then I can either shoot so that I include a lot of sky or I can shoot so I include a lot of water and I'm using the out of focus water glimmer all the way down here when the sun is poking out from time to time which is uh, it is up there and it throws its light down onto the water and it creates for a lot of those specular highlights on the water which I'm then using in my composition leading up into that person. I'm also introducing a lot of clouds just to, yeah, it's some rather dramatic clouds we actually have today. So the first part of this video, as you can see, a blue sky, but it's a very windy day and we are supposed to get a lot of showers coming in. So that should create some interesting conditions the rest of the day. And this is the main reason why I'm here. And I'm basically just either shooting the lighthouse or that person trying to find some kind of focal point. But yeah, this is, uh, this is quite cool actually. So if you enjoy this video, I would of course highly appreciate a like. I usually have that little pop-up sign to remind you guys, so I don't have to say it in each video. It's basically just to remind you because I know from myself that each time I watch a YouTube video, I usually forget to like it unless someone actually says it in the video. So it is not to like manipulate you to like my video or something uh, stupid like that. It's simply just to remind you guys to like it because it really, really helps my channel to be spread out to even more people and of course a comment i would also highly appreciate that and a share and yeah all, all all the engagement that you can give me i would highly appreciate it thank you very much <laughs> so light is just such an important part of my composition decision makings <laughs> The thing is that right now I have the sun behind me. I walked all the way over to the other side of the lighthouse. But even though the clouds have a little bit of texture, it's not like they are super texture rich. And as long as the clouds are not particularly interesting, I'm using the light to light up the lighthouse. And then I'm simply just it's not real front light, it's more like a little bit of side slash front light, <laughs> I guess. Usually I really like to shoot in backlit conditions, so my, I'm shooting towards the subject and towards the light at the same time. But right now the sun is so far up in the sky that it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. I don't get any interesting sky behind my subject. So right now I'm basically just using the light to my benefit, making sure that it lights up the lighthouse. And it looks really, really nice when this white lighthouse is being hit by the sun because it just lights up so much and creates these super contrasty and, and super dramatic photos. Another thing I also often hear is that people find central compositions to be boring or a little bit of a mistake. And yeah, as I've already explained uh, that you should use the rule of thirds or golden ratio or all those things. But in all honesty, I find central compositions to be super interesting because they are so bombastic and so simple and, and, and creates a lot of like, you know, that feeling of minimalism. And also there's no doubt about what you're supposed to look at <laughs> in the photo when it comes to central compositions. I think it's a little bit of a mistake uh, when I read around on like, home pages and they talk about that central compositions is a mistake. I don't think so. So use central compositions to your benefit. It's definitely not a mistake. So it is a mistake to think it's a mistake to use central compositions. 
so yeah, as you can see, most of my photos today has been more or less central composition. They're just so powerful with this powerful, awesome lighthouse. So another compositional mistake that you can make is to create unfortunate angles or not optimal perspectives. So in this particular case here, I've come very close to the lighthouse and I'm basically shooting up towards it right now. Just ignore the light, it's terrible, <laughs> I know. But uh, for this example here, when I'm taking this photo, even though I'm actually shooting all the way in at 28 millimeter, I'm still creating a, a little bit of a skewed perspective with this tower. It's something I also talked about in last year's summer video from another lighthouse here in Denmark. If you get too close with your wide angle lens and shooting up a building, it may be towering above you, which can be an effect you want, but it also gives a little bit of a skewed perspective, which is not always super flattering to the building that you're photographing and it's not showing how big it actually is. Another thing is that you can, as you can see here, I have some trees here behind me. For some reason, in this example, without thinking about it, you're just covering up parts of your composition or part of your subject with some other element in the scene, like a tree or a bush or something like that. And you obviously don't want to do that either. And here is another example where it's more or less just like, you know, a, a touristy photo. I have kind of a leading line with the trail there, but there's not really any order to the photo. There's just too much clutter. There's too much stuff in the scene that detracts from the lighthouse. So overall, this very touristy-ish snapshot is also something you definitely want to avoid. So this place here is actually quite a touristy location because it is the westernmost point of Denmark and it's called Blåvands Hook. I am going to add this place to my landscape photography map of Denmark. So if you come to Denmark or if you're a Danish photographer and you want some inspiration of places or where to go, this map is for you. It is very easy to integrate with Google Maps and use there. And of course, if you want to learn even more about composition, be sure to get my two eBooks. Lots of five-star reviews, very easy to read, plenty of photos to get to the point fast. So there are links to both the map and the ebooks down in the description. As it was my first visit to this location, I spent quite a lot of time walking around the dune area. Besides the tall grass, I sadly struggled quite a lot with finding some proper foregrounds. But another issue was all the buildings, antennas, power lines and generally distracting elements I had to deal with. I removed the power lines on all my final photos from this day, but especially when I walked further away and tried to incorporate some trails and more of the surroundings, you really get to see all the distracting elements in the area. I'll elaborate a bit on this in a moment. I like the atmosphere and clouds of this photo, but the background wind turbines, the power lines, antennas, houses and old bunkers are just too much to really make me like this photo as a whole. Before I got a pretty good sunset, I was hit by a shower where I recorded a couple more compositional mistakes you want to avoid. So it can actually be a little bit challenging trying to make examples of something that doesn't work because it feels so forced because you kind of feel that that's not uh, natural that someone would compose a photo like that. But I've tried to make an example right here where as you can see, I'm including some of these trees right here next to the lighthouse. The thing is, when you compose a photo, you definitely would want to avoid having high contrast elements and attention grabbing elements along the edge of your screen because they just take the attention away from the subject, which is the lighthouse. And that is the reason why I've composed many of the photos the way I've composed them today, where I just have the tower alone sticking up from some kind of foreground. It's simply just to avoid all those attention grabbing elements that can draw attention away from your subject. Super important because it can really make or break your photo if you're not aware about what else is within your frame and anything that is very close 
to your edge. After all, you want people to look into your photo and not out of your photo. So another mistake I also see from time to time, which again for me just <laughs> it's, so, it's so hard to compose it because it kind of again feels so forced, but it is to have a leading line. As you can see here, here's the trail that just leads you out of the frame instead of up to the lighthouse. You can see here I have composed the photo just to like try to force in that foreground and then there's like a leading line that leads you out of the frame. It doesn't really make sense. And I see it not just with trails, I see it with locks and piers along the sea. I see it with branches and, and other stuff. That is definitely a compositional mistake that you want to avoid. Leading lines should lead to the subject or through the image. So I have to record this on my phone because my Osmo died, but uh, I still think the phone is doing pretty well. So uh, the light came after I've been walking around the dunes the entire day. I simply have not been able to find a proper composition with some leading lines and some proper foreground. So sometimes you just have to accept that there's just not a shot as you want it. So I'm just doing the most simple thing. I'm simplifying the scene. I'm zooming all the way in. I am at, well, not all the way. <laughs> I'm at around 130 millimeter. Zooming into the scene and the lighthouse, we have it right here. And as you can see, the sun is poking out here. It's just lighting up the scene, lighting up the clouds from behind. It's absolutely gorgeous light as i've talked about earlier straight on simple composition lighthouse straight in the middle i'm uh, making hdr so so i'm bracketing the photo two stops above one in the middle two stops below just to get the entire dynamic range will i need it hard to say i have a tendency to make rather contrasty photos so if you want to learn how I edit my photos with luminosity masking, how I make my HDR blending, how I add contrast, dodge and burn, emphasize atmosphere and glow and all the good stuff, be sure to enroll in my huge Photoshop for Landscape Photographers post-processing course here. I show you all the techniques that I'm using to create the images in this video. It should be very easy to get started for beginners and even advanced users should be able to pull something out. There is a link down in the description and a discount code for you to save some money. I changed my position a bit and kept shooting while the light lasted and got a couple more perspectives too. Hope you learned a thing or two and got some inspiration. Remember to check out the links in the description of the video and if you want to watch even more landscape photography and see me get one of my favorite photos in a long long time or get some tips on how to save some money as a landscape photographer, check out either one of the videos on the screen right now.